Unfortunately, things don't always go well for breast augmentation patients. And I've had the pleasure of treating some of these women who've had horrible, terrible results, things that they would have never expected to. Uh, the, there are several reasons why this occurs. And they are typically in one of several categories. One is an either incorrect size of breast implants or an asymmetry from one breast to the other. There are also problems with placement of the implants themselves or complications inherent to the implant. Let me first start with the most common one, and that is that patients who are dissatisfied with the size or asymmetry of their breast implants. This is probably the most common thing I see, and quite frankly, I believe it's just an inadequate amount of time spent between the surgeon and the patient, which is very unfortunate. I find it also particularly disturbing that some plastic surgeons are so arrogant as to decide the implant size for their patients. I think this is an absolutely horrible thing to do. When patients ask me my opinion, I basically tell them that I'm the last person they should be asking. Implant size is a very specific question, a very personal question that they need to really come up with an answer on their own. As the surgeon, it is my job to place the implants perfectly so that they look natural, soft, and symmetric. But I rely on my patients to choose the size and the look that they want. The other issue that I see is asymmetry in size. I find that some surgeons use two different size implants when it's always not necessary to do so. I find that all women have some differences in breast shape and size. However, implants vary as well. When you make as small as a 25 cc change in the type of implant, the diameter changes and the projection changes as well. I find it's much better to shape the breast by removing some breast tissue to both improve the size difference and also the shape of the breast and then use the same size implant. Only in rare situations where I feel that I'm unable to properly shape and reduce one breast to match it to the other will I use a different size implant. The next problem I'd like to talk about is placement problems. This is usually an occurrence when one implant is placed either higher or lower than the other or further out from center than the other or too close or even past center in some situations. Another problem occurs when the implant essentially moves into the armpit as the patient lays down. All of these problems are essentially an improper management of the pocket. To place a breast implant, a precise pocket must be made exactly where you want to have the implant sit. If the implant pocket is placed too high, simply you will have too much fullness at the top of the nipple that can potentially point downwards. If it's placed too low, the opposite can occur, where there's very little fullness at the top, a nipple that points upwards, and there's way too much fullness at the bottom of the breast, and sometimes what's called a double du bubble deformity. A double bubble deformity is a situation where the implant is so low that the natural fold essentially rides up on the implant itself, where you have the fullness of the implant and then the fullness of the breast on top of it, hence the name. The other problem that occurs is when implants are put too far apart. And this is a horrible situation where you have a tremendous gap between the implants, which is something that no woman wants. And an extreme example of this is when the pocket is made so far particularly in the outer aspects, that when a woman lays down, she essentially goes flat in the chest area and the implant rides into the armpit. The opposite of the situation is something where the implant is placed too close to center, sometimes past center, where the implants essentially touch. These are all terrible complications of breast implants, but they can all be fixed, and these are all situations I've seen many times and have had the pleasure of fixing. And the reason this is such a pleasure is because you typically when women come to see me, they've been operated on two or three times and they feel depressed. This is the last thing that they wanted. But by being able to correct this problem and giving them the breast that they had hoped for originally, it's the most satisfying part of what I do. I manipulate the pocket in these situations. And this is a combination of both pocket opening and closing. Opening the pocket where I want to increase the fullness and closing the pocket where it shouldn't be. In the situation of a double bubble or an implant that's fallen out, I place permanent stitches, and many of them, along the lower border 
and the outer border of the implant pocket. What this does is it fixes the implant back in a position where it should be, where it always should have been. The last need for a revisional surgery is an inherent complication of the implant itself. Most commonly, contracture or possibly infection or bleeding. Infection and bleeding is a very rare occurrence now, and it can be treated simply by removing the implant temporarily in the case of infection, allowing the infection to settle and resolve, and then replacing the implant. Although it relies on a great deal of patience from the patient itself, the results are essentially identical to what would have been had the infection never occurred. A risk of bleeding or hematoma. This is something that typically happens within the first 24 hours of implant placement, and again, a very rare occurrence. In this situation, it's important to go back in, remove the blood, and find out where the bleeding is from, and then reinserting the implant at that same time. Again, the results of this operation also essentially are no different from had this problem never occurred. The last complication, and probably the most dreaded one because it happens with relatively higher frequency, is that of a contracture. Contractures occur for no reason. We don't know why they occur, but we do know that certain things influence them. We know that putting the implant under the muscle reduces the risk of contracture. We also know that using a textured implant reduces the risk of contracture. What occurs in this situation is a squeezing of the implant capsule. Simply put, whenever a foreign body, whether it be a breast implant or a pacemaker, is put inside a human body, the body forms a shell around itself or a capsule. This is a normal occurrence, and we want this to happen. It's essentially a walling off process. In a very small percentage, and I should point out that in my practice, and now over 6,000 breast implants, I've only had 24 contractures. This capsule essentially squeezes itself, and this creates a very firm, misshapen, and unnatural, sometimes painful breast. Once this occurs, I found the only treatment is surgical. What I've done in those situations, I've gone back in, removed the shell or the capsule completely, and replaced the implant with a textured implant. And so far, I've had a 100% success rate. In treating patients who have come to me from other areas, I find the most common reason for contracture is an implant that is placed on top of the muscle. In those situations, I do not use a textured implant. I still prefer to use a smooth implant. But simply by placing the implant from on top to under the muscle, again, I've had a 100% success rate and avoided this contracture problem. Picking your surgeon is probably the single most important factor in getting the results you want. I would like to use my experience in the field of breast surgery and breast implant surgery to get you the result that you're looking for.